Welcome back to our channel at Soccer Zone USA. My name is DJ Divini, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you five pro tips that you can use to improve your juggling right now. Juggling the ball or doing kickups is a great way to improve your ball control and master your touch. The best thing about mastering your ball control this way is that you only need a ball. I don't need a bunch of fancy equipment. I don't need a ton of space. I just need this ball, some patience and determination to improve my skills. Now in this video, we'll be teaching you how to master the ball like a pro, but not only do we wanna master the ball like a pro, we wanna look like a pro too. So let's check out the fit for today. So the most important thing, we have a ball. This is the Nike, USA flight ball. And to keep our pro look going, we're wearing the New York Red Bulls 2021-2022 home kit. This is the authentic jersey with the New York Red Bulls on the back. Of course, to have a great touch, we need some great cleats. So we have the Nike Phantom Vision. These are the original versions in maroon. If you're looking for any particular boots like these, classic shoes, discontinued shoes, hit us up at contact at soccerzoneusa.com and let us know what you're looking for. We might be able to help you. We have a few of these left in stock in the back, even though we don't sell them on our site or at the store anymore. All right, guys, that's our fit for today. If you want any of these items or other soccer gear, head to the link in our description. Go to soccerzoneusa.com to get the best deals, the best sales, the best soccer gear for your game. Before we break down these five pro tips, we're going to go over the key steps to juggling in the first place, the simple steps, the steps that you've seen and heard before, just so that you remember them and get familiar with the exact technique. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna go over five simple steps to do feet juggling, thigh juggling, headers, and even shoulder juggles. Let's start with the feet. Step one for feet juggling, I'm gonna have my ankle locked in a neutral position. That means that my toes are gonna be flexed slightly up and my foot is gonna be locked and stiff so that if the ball hits my foot, it doesn't flap down or wobble side to side. Step two, let the ball drop. We wanna try our best to let the ball come down almost all the way to the floor, right in front of our body before we make contact with the ball. We don't wanna hit the ball up here at waist height or even at knee height because that means we'll have to bring our foot really high up in the air to do that. We're gonna be awkward with that technique. We're gonna be off balance and my touch just isn't gonna be as good. Step three, make contact with the bottom of the ball using the laces of the foot near the toes. Make sure you're making contact with the bottom center of the ball so that the ball goes straight up and down. If I make contact with the bottom back of the ball, the ball will go forward. If I make contact with the bottom front of the ball, the ball will come towards me too much. Either direction there is gonna be harder to get the next touch in, so we wanna hit the bottom center of the ball. If we hit the bottom sides of the ball, guess what'll happen? That's right, it'll go off to the sides, and then it's gonna be hard to get that next touch again. Step four, kick with your foot from the knee down. Not from the hip down. When I move from the hip down, that means that my leg's going to be straighter, that means my foot's gonna be coming up higher, I'm meeting the ball higher, and although I could do this, I'm gonna be more off balance, that touch is gonna be less in control, and I'm gonna to have to move a lot more to get to the next touch. So instead, as we let the ball drop low, we have our ankle locked, we're gonna make contact with the bottom center, and we're gonna kick the ball from the knee down. This way I have good balance, good technique on the contact, and the ball will stay right in front of me going up and down. Our final basic step, step five, adjust. Just because we're trying to use the right technique doesn't mean the ball is always gonna come out in the exact place that we want to. Sometimes the ball may go a little bit to the right, sometimes a little bit forward, sometimes a little bit towards us, sometimes a little bit towards the left and so on. So make sure that you're ready to react and adjust to where that ball moves. As you get better at adjusting, predicting the ball movement and controlling the ball over time, it'll be a lot easier for you to keep the ball in one place and not have to move as much. While at the same time, if you do want to move the ball, you can do that on purpose or if the ball goes on its own, you'll have good practice to move and keep it in control. 
With that being said, keep in mind that we don't need to be able to juggle at all to play professional soccer. At the same time, you'll see any pro on the field sidelines warming up and they can juggle a ball as many times as they like. They have total mastery of the ball. So the idea is we want to master the ball. Juggling is going to help us do that. It's going to help refine our touch and become really comfortable with our ball control. However, it is not critical to playing the game of soccer. You do not need to be able to do 10,000 juggles in order to be a pro soccer player. You don't even need to be able to do 1,000 or even 100. You just need to be able to control the ball. I need to be able to receive the ball. I need to be able to pass the ball. I need to be able to dribble the ball. I need to be able to shoot the ball to help my team win games. If you stay focused and use those five main steps for juggling, you will improve over time, whether you're just starting out and are brand new, or you've already been juggling for a little bit, those five steps will help you improve your juggling, which will help you improve your ball control overall. Let's move up to thigh juggling. Now the steps are exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the height of the ball and our body part. So on this, we're gonna have our thigh waist high. So instead of locking our ankle, we have our thigh waist high. Step two, start by tossing the ball up to give yourself time and let it come down to waist height. For step three, we're timing that ball movement so as it gets to waist height, our thigh is waist high so the ball meets our thigh. We wanna make contact with the bottom of the ball just like in feet juggling, but we're using the middle of our thigh. I do not wanna use my knee, I do not want to use my hip. I want it to be right in the middle of my thigh. Step four, bring your knees up quickly. The first one will be quite easy, but the second one will be harder because we need to transition. Whether you use the same thigh or you alternate, we have to move that thigh to waist height quickly. If we do it too slow, we're gonna hit the ball in the wrong part of our thigh or on the wrong part of the ball, and it's gonna go off forward, off to the side, and we're not gonna be able to keep it up. Finally, step five, adjust, just like we did for feet juggling. We might not hit the exact touch we want every single time, so if we hit it a little bit on the side of the thigh, the ball is gonna move, so I wanna be able to move my feet to get to that next touch, even if it's with my foot instead. So as we get better, we'll be able to transition and move towards that ball more easily, predict more easily where that ball is going next based on how we make contact with it and adjust appropriately. Now it's time for headers. If you're under the age of 12, don't do this, but if you are 12 or over, you can practice header juggles. Step one, as we go to make contact with the ball, we wanna have our head tilted back so that our hairline is facing directly at the sky. We want the top of our forehead pointing straight up. Step two, start by tossing the ball straight up, not too high, just above the head, so that it's gonna come down where my head is. Don't throw it in front of you, because then you'll have to move. Don't throw it over your head, because you won't be able to see it. Step three, make contact with the bottom center of the ball, just like feet, just like thighs, but make contact using the top of the forehead near the hairline. Step four, move from the knees to provide some momentum going into the ball. That momentum will keep the ball going up and down. So for our feet, we swung from the knee down to make a kicking motion. For our thighs, we brought our knees up quickly. And for our head, we're gonna bounce at the knees very slightly to push the ball up. This will allow you to keep the ball going up and down. Step five, you know it, adjust. If I don't hit the ball the exact right way, it'll go off to the side, it'll go backwards, a little bit forward. So make sure not only are you bending those knees, but you're ready to move your feet in case you need to adjust towards the ball. Just like the other techniques, you'll get better over time and you'll be able to keep the ball in one place. Now mainly we're gonna be using our feet and our thighs to juggle. We can also use different parts of our feet like the insides or the outsides. But right now we're gonna practice using our shoulders. Step one for using my shoulders, I'm going to leave one shoulder exposed so I put my weight on the opposite side. Step two, toss the ball up and let that ball come down so it'll connect with the top of the shoulder you wanna use. Step 
three, hit the bottom center of the ball using the top middle of your shoulder. As the ball makes contact with your shoulder, shrug your shoulder straight up slightly. So instead of bouncing at my knees like for the header, I can just shrug this shoulder up similar to how I raise my knee for a thigh touch and that'll allow the ball to go up and down continuously. And finally, step five, adjust. It's gonna be pretty difficult to hit this shoulder touch. If you do hit it up, it might not go straight. So be ready to move forward, backward, and side to side to get another touch in or transition to another body part like thighs or feet. There you have it for feet juggles, thigh juggles, headers, and shoulder juggles. And like I mentioned, you can use other parts of the body like your heel, you could use your back, anything you want to try to keep the ball up, have fun and be creative, working on mastering that ball. We wouldn't really use these skills or these techniques specifically in the game to keep the ball up in the air, but it's a fantastic way to practice mastering the ball on your own. Now it's time for five pro tips to help you improve your juggling even more. Tip number one, start with one at a time. If you're new to juggling, new to soccer, new to these techniques at all, start with one touch at a time with each technique. As you practice with one touch at a time, practice catching it after to demonstrate that you did it with some control. If I have a really bad touch, I'm not able to catch it, that probably means that the touch wasn't very good, so I need to keep working on that one touch. What I like to do is hold the ball at my waist, get ready to strike the ball with my strong foot. I drop the ball until it's close to the floor, my ankle is locked, I make contact with the bottom of the ball, and I kick from the knee down hard enough for the ball to go back to my hands. If you can do this and kick it up with the proper part of the foot, with your ankle locked, waiting for the ball to come down low, and swinging from the knee down, you're probably gonna have a good touch, especially if you caught it back in your hands. For practice, if you're new, pro tip one, start with one at a time, practice 10 times on each side. Make sure you get 10 quality touches before you switch. Then move on to a different body part like the thighs, and only count the ones that you think were pretty good. If it goes like this, maybe don't count that one so you get more practice on doing the proper technique. Pro tip two, use bounces. Especially for feet juggling, use bounces in between once you've mastered doing one or two touches at a time. Using bounces allows me a lot more time between touches so I can adjust as necessary, but still use the proper technique. Remember, I'm letting the ball come all the way down after it's bounced so that I'm hitting the ball near the floor with my ankle locked and kicking from the knee down. Using bounces will be harder to do from your thighs, but it's a good way to transition to feet juggling if you lose control of thigh juggles. So if you start with the thighs and get a couple and it falls down, you can just start using feet juggles with and without bounces after it drops. Pro tip three, record yourself doing the techniques and then compare them to pro players on YouTube or in videos that you've seen before. Make sure when you film yourself, you're fully in frame so that you can see your feet, your body, the ball, so we can watch all of the mechanics. And make sure that you film from a sideways position so that you can see if you're doing the technique properly. If you film straight on from the front, you might not see things that are possibly going wrong. Pro tip four, learn tricks and skills from tutorials online from friends or coaches. One thing that helped me improve my juggling tremendously was when I started working on different tricks and advanced movements that took my mind off the juggling itself and had me focusing on something that I was setting a goal towards to work on. So if I wanted to get this trick, it might take me a really long time and during that process, I'm doing a lot of juggling in between 
And that juggling, that repetition helps me improve that technique much faster because I'm focusing on the trick, not on the juggling. So if you haven't done other tricks before or you wanna learn some new tricks, just go on YouTube, find some soccer trick videos that you can practice, put them on, watch the steps, and then practice on your own. Let's do one right now. This is a really easy combination that we're gonna do while juggling. The first trick is gonna be the knee bounce, which looks like this. For the knee bounce, all I'm gonna do is drop the ball from about waist height. Don't slam it, don't throw it up, just drop it. As I release the ball, I'm bringing my knee up so that my knee is bent. I'm gonna pause in that position for a half second and as the ball bounces up, I'm gonna snap my knee down to hit the top of the ball. One, two, three. That's the knee bounce. So now let's put it in a combination with juggles. Juggle with bounces or continuously. When you're ready, have a firm touch, letting the ball bounce, bring the knee up and bring the knee down. Now let's combine it with one more move, the knee catch. To do the knee catch, you're just gonna drop the ball, same as before. Step two, you're gonna step towards the ball so it makes contact with the inside of the weak knee. One, two. As it's making contact with that knee, you're gonna grab it with the opposite leg. Don't jump, don't bend your knees together, just drop, step, and grab. If you get this a few times from a dropping step, move on to juggling with or without bounces. Have your last touch be a firm touch, let it bounce, step towards the ball, and then grab it with the opposite leg. One, one, two, three. One, two, three. From this position to continue our juggle, let's drop it down to our feet, stand on one leg. We're gonna release the ball and catch it between our ankles using our strong foot. Let's combine all of these together. Start by juggling, throw bounces in when needed, hit a knee bounce, continue juggling, have a firm touch, do the knee catch, feet catch, and toss it back up to continue your juggle. If you're good at juggling, you can do this without bounces. And finally, pro tip five, challenge yourself by using something other than a soccer ball or set different goals for yourself, whether it's mastering a new trick or setting a record for the most juggles that you've done before. Setting goals and challenging yourself will help you stay focused on getting better. And if you're already good at juggling, using something different will make it even more challenging so it's not boring just sitting there keeping the ball up. So I have a tennis ball, and if I master my skills and technique, controlling the ball, mastering a soccer ball, I can challenge myself with a tennis ball. It's smaller, different texture. I might have to move a little bit more. I really have to focus on my eye-foot coordination. I have to focus on having a really delicate touch. Oh, look at that shot. And here I even have a t-shirt that I just rolled up into a ball. Let's juggle that. The wind's catching it a little, but I can still do it. And it's harder, it comes apart, but it's a fun way to challenge myself and my control.